If you said, I would like to get all of military history within one vista, within one eye shot, I think if I just said that up front, you would say that is impossible. And those military miniatures, those toy soldiers, they accomplished that. And you can stand in one room and see, you know, the evolution of uniforms, the evolution of technology. You can see how universal war is with figures from all over the world. That can only happen with a miniature. I was appointed as assistant curator in the fall of 1983 by Mrs. Brown, Mrs. John Nicholas Brown. I came in and got to know the toy soldier collection, but also the books and the prints. I was told that in 1930, she went on her honeymoon to Europe and uh, she saw some of these toy soldiers in, in toy shops in, in London and Paris. And she thought they would make an interesting display in, in the house that she was about to move into, which was on Benefit Street. So she bought a lot of these boxes of toy soldiers. She was just fascinated by the variety of the costumes and uniforms. And she started to buy reference material so she could identify and know more about the origins and how uniforms had evolved. And that was really the genesis of the military collection. It's a mixture of toy soldiers um, and collector's items. And, and when you walk around and see the figures, you'll see the difference. These figures made for children are just mass produced. There's very little uh, evidence of features and so on. Whereas the collector's items, those were expensive pieces for adult collectors with a lot of details of uniforms and medals and, and facial features and so on. Basically, the collection is uh, purports to show what any military person in any army at any stage of history, war. I think of it, and I've described this as sort of like a march of history, the way it's chronologically laid out from the ancient Egyptians and the, the Greeks and the Romans, and then right up in, you know, through 18th, 19th century and, and through the First World War. And, uh, you know, it's impressive. We have elephants, we have uh, drummer boys, we have mounted cavalry, we have Greeks, we have the whole panoply of the whole miniature soldier world. It illustrates history in a sort of tactile way. You can look at these figures, you can see them in chronology, so how things have evolved over time. It can spark further curiosity about these time periods in history. It all comes down to the fact that a picture is worth a thousand words because I think you could argue that the collection need not have miniatures, need not have illustrated books, and that a scholar would open the books and read the text. But that's not how the human brain works. It speaks to the passion of Mrs. Brown and the passion of color and history and th the fact that she donated this really, truly, fantastic collection to, to Brown. It, it, yeah. it speaks to her service. When my mother donated her collection that had really two parts, books uh, all containing illustrations of military garb throughout eight, the ages, plus the miniature soldiers, that uh, it was for the purpose of having them available for the general public and also scholars. When I came on board, I was somewhat interested in uniforms, but I felt there was a lot more in the collection beyond uniforms, a lot more. My particular area of focus was, uh, was on how artists had represented war, uh, and there's a lot of military iconography in, war, in, in the collection that has very little to do with uniforms. Yes, obviously, if you look at the picture, the men and, and some women are wearing uniforms, but that was not the focus. And I began to try, uh, to try and focus on the social aspects of the, of the collection. And over the last five, six, seven years, the special collections have basically taken that idea and, and developed it. There's a lot that focuses on the military in society. Often to understand diplomacy, imperialism, colonization, well, you have to understand war. I think understanding war is the best way to avoid it. It's the best way to understand how to manage and shorten wars to lessen suffering. And I think those are all things I've seen, you know, the Brown community very interested in. And so it's, you know, really just fortuitous that one of the finest collections on understanding war happens to be in this library.
I think above all, it's a reference library. And Peter Harrington can attest to the fact that he is weakly uh, asked uh, to use the collection to establish fact, which is, I think, why libraries should exist. <laughs>